We're beginning a new series to get our minds right about about God. Uh, we can say, well, I already have it right. Uh, everything I've always thought about God just slots right into my life. It's, he's, he's been a perfect addition to my life. He hasn't, he hasn't been as confrontive as I thought he would be. He, he actually just kind of confirms everything I've, I've always believed about everything. And we would say, you might want to check that, right? <laughs> like, wait, wait a minute. If God just confirms everything you're thinking about, um, if God is there just, just saying, yep, yep, amen, whatever you think, amen, whatever you think, amen, maybe we've got some rethinking to do, right? In fact, that's one of the main arguments about, uh, that atheists bring about, about religious people is that you're just, you're just deifying, you're just making into God your best wishes or what your, hope, what your hopes were. And I look at the person of Jesus and I think of what he went through and the suffering he went through. And, and I say, really, we're making that up? I, don't, I just, I'm not, I'm not sensing it. If I was going to write out the story, I don't think I would write it this way. Um, if, but, if, but if God just slots right into your everyday life as a wonderful little addition, um, then we've got some rethinking to do. Because, because we are talking about uh, a, a good, good father, yes, but a, but a glorious being that we are, we are under. That we don't use him. He's he's the one that comes into um, into focus, and we we come into his realm, and not the other way around. So we just have to be very careful about that. And we talked about last week how what you believe about God is a very telling thing about how you're going to live and and how that's all going to work out in your life. And so we just want to get it right. Uh, so we're engaging a book, so no, no, um, no mistakes about it, no, not cover-up. Can you hold up your book down there? You've got a copy of a book right below you. Right? Yeah. So this is based on, Jocelyn's got it, uh, a book I read this summer that just helped so much figure out how are we going to put these spiritual practices into place as a community. And I thought, okay, we've got to figure out a way to make just a teaching series about it, but then push it into connection groups as well so that you can discuss this. Disagree with it if you like, but deal with it. We must. And so the subtitle is beautiful. Uh, so the good and beautiful God falling in love with the God Jesus knows. And so we want to get his perspective on how he presents God to us. Now, we are presented constantly with God. Um, you know, if, if you're at a sporting event like Seahawks, you know, you'll get you'll get the whole deal. You sports nuts, uh, you know, who are you just need to fall in line and repent. I remember the first time I was accosted. I think some of you were there. I saw you there um, at a at a Chris Tomlin concert at the Key Arena. It was so awesome. We're going to worship Jesus. This is going to be so great. We're just so excited. And repent, you entertainment seekers. I'm like, okay, uh, wait a minute. Uh, I'm not a sports nut, but I guess I was going to a concert and that could be demonic in some way, I guess. Maybe, but I'm like, I just want to worship Jesus. This is so great. Um, they show up pretty much everywhere. And locally, um, this was at Liberty High School um, recently. And of course, my neighbors were all in a flurry, like, what are these people doing here? And why, you know, fear, fear God. Of course, of course. Do we need to repent? Uh, yeah, if you think you're going in the right direction and God confronts you, you need to go in the opposite direction. Uh, now, most of us don't receive the message as well. There may be a few stories in here who are like, yeah, that guy is what turned me around and gave me a, just a beautiful heart for Jesus. Um, you know, I think if, if they were holding up a sign that said John 3.16, and I said, read that verse to me, they'd probably say something like, God so hated the world that he killed his only son, right? And I'd be like, oh, let's go. Like, no, he, he, he loved the world that he gave his only son. But repent we must. So we want to take a look at that word. It shows up all throughout Scripture, the word many of you know, metanoia, um, it's a it's a it's an about face. It's a change of of thinking, certainly, but that changes your behavior because our thinking always affects our behavior. It's what we believe that leads to our actions. And so, in the New Testament, it, it refers to that that full change of your orientation, moving toward God. Of course, when Jesus comes on the scene, uh, and, and we see it in Matthew, he 
he's, he's baptized, he's in, in the temptation in the wilderness. And then uh, from that time on, Jesus began to preach saying, repent. This is from the, the lemma, from metanoia, from, the, uh, from that word we were at. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon and, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So in context, there needs to be a repentance and also a following. It's this whole orientation shift. It's, it's not about your little private world and just starting thinking things differently. There's movement associated with our mind change. And that's an important thing for us to think about. But when it comes down to our New Year's resolutions and it comes down to uh, the, the, the making anything actually happen, we have, we have this thing called willpower. We talk about that a lot, willpower. I've hyphenated it because does the will really have power? Does, does the will have any power? Uh, so let's, let's, let's think about that. So we, we know this um, intuitively, but here's a stat. <laughs> that 95% of the New Year's resolutions are broken um, really quickly uh, by the end of January. And so th- but the, the result of that is people feel just like they're worthless, Apparently, I can't change. Apparently, I'm never going to be able to do that. Apparently, I'm a failure. Apparently, I don't have what it takes to pull off this Christian thing or this fitness thing or this diet thing. Apparently, I'm just not that person. Um, But the will, and and this comes straight out of the book, the will is more like a a bit in the mouth of of a horse. The power is in the horse. There's a wild horse there. Some of you are will not be bridled. And, and then there's a, there's a horse with a, with a bit. The willpower turns the overall body that, that you have, but it doesn't have any power in itself. And so here are just some thoughts to think about. So we've got uh, the capacity to choose is your will, right? And you've got your mind uh, influencing your mind. So your thoughts lead to your emotions, lead to your decisions, lead to your actions. Of course, we get hungry, and so we got to eat, but then you got to choose <laughs> what you're going to eat. So your bodily needs go to your thoughts, which lead to your emotions and decisions and actions. And then you've got your social context, or we just call it peer pressure, right? So what is everybody around me doing? Um, it's pretty easy to say no to, uh, to sweets and pies and you know, cookies and cakes and all that kind of stuff when they're not in your house. But when the party comes and everybody brings it around, like, here, you got to try this. You got to try this. You got to try that. Pretty soon you, you have your dessert plate, you know, and it's this big, right? So, so that's just something to think about, just to have in the back of your mind as we, as, we, as we go forward into this. Most people want to change. Um, and it's not because they're weak that they can't change. They're just not training properly. Okay? It's not because you're weak that you can't change. Um, it's, it's a training issue. You, 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 may have, you may have figured out, okay, this is what I want. This is what I want. I want to be super, super strong. Or I want to I I do that. And so how many of you have started out at the gym? You go there and you start out at the gym and you're like, all right, what should I lift? Everything, right? Let's go, I'm going to get super strong now. And just, whoa, yeah, look at that. And you're doing that, you're doing that. And you just go home sore. Well, that, that was me yesterday after flag football. But um, I could walk. It was just kind of barely, I think is what the thing was. Um, training is kind of a big deal. Um, so I know some of you are suckers for that. And you've bought the personal training. You actually have to go get, do the training too. You can't just hire a personal trainer to do the thinking for you. You've got to actually train that's one of the missing links there. But, but what's going on is that, that we, um, we think in stories. So this is how our brains work. We think in stories. Uh, we dream in stories. Uh, I have really a lot of trouble coming up with what I dreamed about, but they, I know there were stories there. And we believe our stories. 100% of the time. Your, the influences that come from out there are slotting into your story, your way of viewing the world. If any of you have tried to raise kids, and I say try, um, you know, advisedly, you're trying to raise kids and you're trying to say, no, no, that's not the way it is. Oh, no, it's the way it is for them. 
Because in their world, the way, that, the way this thing acts into their story, this is the truest thing. And this, is, this, is, this just confirms what I've always believed, dot, dot, dot. You know this. Um, when someone tries to convince you, oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, no, you did. I have a whole story about how you meant that. They're like, oh, I'm not sure you, you did. Uh, my wife and I was, we were talking um, recently about how we were arranging our family, which is a real deal, and our home to be able to invite a young woman um, who's turning 18 soon but is in the foster care system, to invite her to come in and experience family for the ah, first time in a really long time. Really rough situation, rough background, currently living in homeless shelters. So we were trying to set a new story for her, but she is in her old story so much, right? Uh, wouldn't it be great to have a family, have a bed, have a place where you could cook whenever you wanted to, have these different things? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's kind of nice, but it doesn't fit my story. And my story is this is who I am, this is who I'm building up to be. And as I was sharing with some of you, uh, you know, we, we would say things like, well, um, when you come home, uh, we're going to want to know when you're coming home at night, setting up some expectations. Like, ooh, why would you want to do that? Like, well, because we would be like a, a family. The new story would be family, and it would be you in finding people who care about you. You'd have a little brother over there who would be like, is she home yet? Is she home yet? Is she, is she okay? Or is everything, is everything all right? Because he would love you, you know? And you have a mom staying up late. I usually, I'm in bed. But um, she, she would be up late uh, waiting for you to come home. And this girl was just like, oh, I couldn't do that. I wouldn't want anybody worrying about me. That doesn't fit my independence story. So even though maybe this might be a wonderful thing, I was like, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't have people caring that much about me because that's just not the way the world is. Like, well, for some people it is. But our stories don't always, don't always work. There's got to be an a interesting thing there. So pray for Pauli. Who knows? Who knows what God's going to do in her life? But um, we're hoping that, that God would continue to shape her. But, we, but, our, but, but our stories, and this person has always done this, and this is the way things always are, and, and they'll never be like this, and I'm on my own, and this is the way things are. And then you get new data, and you're like, reject it. It doesn't fit my story, because the story that I'm in is the, is the truest, realest story uh, for me. So here's what James Bryan Smith, that author, says, uh, we're shaped by our stories. In fact, um, Maybe read it to you here. Uh, in fact, our stories once in place determine much of our behavior without regard to their accuracy or helpfulness. Amen. It just keeps rolling. Like, why do I just keep saying these things? Why do I keep doing these things? The story just has its own power. Once these stories are stored in our minds, they stay there largely unchallenged until we die. These narratives are running and often ruining our lives. That's why it's crucial to get the right Narratives. That's why we're leaning into the story of Jesus. And in this message uh, that we, we heard today from Romans, uh, this word, the depth of the riches of the, the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgments and inscrutable his ways, who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor, who has, been, who has given him a gift that he might be repaid for from him and through him and to him are all things to him be the glory forever and ever. And then he says, I, I appeal to you, therefore, um, to to change your mind, to have your minds changed. But the way it happens is you present your bodies and, and you say, Here, here's all of me, holy and acceptable. I'm going to give myself completely to you, God. And, and I, I believe that starts by not conforming to the other stories, but to getting a new story. And I believe it starts by getting our minds reset. And it says, I think the way you do this is, is be transformed by the renewal of your mind. By testing, you may discern what is the will of God. So in this new year, I think our new intention needs to just be to make sure we're in the right story, to make sure that we're believing the right things about God, that we're, we're engaging God as who he truly is. And so we're going to look at the narratives here in the future about, about Jesus regarding God, and that's going to be one of the first things. Um, the goal is not just to be um, stronger people. The goal is to be like Jesus, right? 
and our minds need to be refreshed. I'm going to move to the next one because I think this is where the, the meat is, where the struggle is, where I'm not sure you believe this. I'm not, I've, try, I've been thinking through this myself. The spiritual disciplines should, not, should be seen as wisdom, not righteousness. Let me take some unpacking. Spiritual disciplines, name a few. Prayer, good. Prayer is, is, is uh, okay, me talking to God. Usually it's just it's kind of right there, okay? Spiritual, and I need to do that more. Oh, I got to be more prayerful, right? What are some other things? Uh, worship, so uh, corporate and personal, but maybe the whole thing just, just be in hearts of worship. Yeah, yeah, that's a discipline. It doesn't come easy all the time, but it's something you have to kind of train for, yeah? What else? Oh, that was a lot. Scripture. So, yeah, engaging with Scripture. That's correct, yeah. Fasting. Good, yeah. Yeah, that'd be, we need to explore that as a church, I think. Like, well, okay, what, what's behind that? And how do, we, how do we engage that in an appropriate way? Yeah. Now, there's lots of, lots, of, lots of things that we do, but I think sometimes we, we do them, and we do them very much personally and privately. And then we kind of... We say, what do you think about that, God? Is that good enough? Is this righteous? Is this holy? Is this, am, I, am I good enough now? Am I, are you happy with me? Because I looked inside and I did all this work and now are you, now are you pleased with me? And I think that, I think, we've, I think we think that a lot. I, I have been in rounds and rounds with Jesus this week going, oh my, oh, I think, ooh, oh no, oh no. Oh no, I maybe have this backwards. <laughs> I maybe have been really pursuing just doing these things so that I can feel like I'm good enough and I'm smart enough and doggone it, God loves me, you know? And that, that okay, so I'm, I'm getting it all done and so maybe now I can earn his, oh wait, that's not the way it goes, right? We don't do these things to, to gain his approval. We have his approval by the invitation of Jesus. And if, you're, if you don't feel invited, Take this invitation. He invites us into the family of God. He covers our sin by his sacrifice and says, these are now a purified people, holy and pleasing to God, who are now going to live out a brand new life in God's brand new world that he's creating through his people. And so the spiritual disciplines, like, okay, got to get that done, got to get that done, got to get that done. Are you pleased yet, God? Okay, a little bit more, got to get that done. Oh, I failed, I failed, I failed, I failed. Okay, are you going to... We're living in an interesting story, but I don't think it's the story that Jesus is providing for us. So wisdom, like, oh yeah, should you spend time in Scripture? How else are you going to absorb the knowledge of God? You can't get in Scripture. Should you pray? <laughs> should you pray? I mean, if you're in a relationship with God, you would talk with God, right? It's just it's, it's wisdom. Of, of course, you would do these things, and of course, you would practice these things. And and, and this is where I think my narrative. And again, I thank you every time you become my therapist. I really appreciate this. Um, my narrative has been just get better and try harder. I mean, what is wrong with you anyway? Why can't you just pull it off? I mean, God's done all this for you. Why don't you just shape up and get your act together? And Come on, pull your weight. I know where it comes from, by the way. Um, it's just my upbringing. It's just the way it was. But it's not a journey toward moral perfection, inward, inward, inward. The, the disciplines are, are we're, we're going to call it soul training, <laughs> like shaping our souls to be able to be better receivers of God's goodness and his beauty and his mercy and his love and do it together, not just inward for myself, because we're a part of a community. So uh, <clears throat> obviously I'm not a bodybuilder. You guys guessed that. Um, but I have done my fair amount of physical therapy because I've got a bad back and all sorts of other things. I injure myself um, as often as possible. Um, and so, and so, but you guys know the difference between bodybuilding and, and weight training uh, or bodybuilding and, and physical therapy. Um, but there's some overlap, isn't there? The overlap is you're trying to strengthen. You're, you're trying to overcome deficiencies. You're trying to overcome areas of weakness. And so you, you're, you're doing that. But I met with a bodybuilder once. Uh, we were doing some ministry in a neighborhood and met with a guy, and, and he was a straight-up bodybuilder. I mean, he just ate whole turkeys for dinner, you know, just, rrr, this guy. And um, I'm like, okay. Uh, but one, one of the big deals with them and with all bodybuilders is flexibility because you can get all 
bowed up, but then you got to release your arms sometime too, right? You got to be able to do. So it's a constant stretching thing for bodybuilders because they're practically useless, except for show and doing doing those things, right? I think some of us know this. Uh, but the goal of physical therapy is usefulness. Like I would like to walk with you know, like one foot in front of the other. I'd like to have my you know a little bit of arch in my back. I'd like to be able to please you know. I'd like to be able to get out of a chair, things like that. I would like to be able to serve my family. I'd like to be able to play sports again. I would like to be able to do all these different things. Do you, do you sense the difference? Personal, just just go. Let's just pop, pop, pop the pecs and just let's just make this happen. You know, I want to I want to look that way is different than I want to be able to help my neighbors move a couch when they need to have it moved. You know. So Max and I showed up to a neighbor's house the other day, and we're like, we're, this is our calling. This is what we're meant for, you know? It's this big massage chair. It's full of metal and plastic. And so we're just going to, let's go up the stairs with this. And, and he's like, how did you guys do that? And we're like, we've been training all our lives for this. Right? But, but it's not because we're trying to bow up. Personally, it's because we're built for others. We want to be actually useful. And so, so when we think about our spiritual disciplines or these soul training exercises, can, can we just start to think about it as, okay, I, I want to I be the most useful to God. And if I'm hung up in all these different areas and, and, I, and my story just reels itself out every time I hear these things and I can't, I can't be useful to anybody because I'm just kind of stuck in this box, well, we, let's use some disciplines to get ourselves out of that unstuck so that we're actually useful. It's not about just being spiritually disciplined. I don't think at the, at the pearly gates, God's going to be checking our biceps, spiritual biceps going, oh, all right, so you did it. Okay, you know, you, you bowed up. Okay, look at you. You went all Christian on that. Okay, way to go. You just really did all those spiritual exercises. May all the spiritual disciplined people come inside. No, he says, may the family of Jesus come inside. May the, because we're coming like him, not just, not just these sideshow freaks of moral spirituality, personal moral rectitude or whatever. We're, we're to be useful to the kingdom. Remember in that passage about transformation, what did it say? We're, we're being renewed and, are, and, and discerning what God's will is. And then the next thing is, um, we've, we're not supposed to think more highly than we ought to think, but think with sober judgment, according to the measure of faith God's assigned it, we're a body and we have many members. And so, uh, the members don't all have the same function. And so though we are many, uh, though many, we are one body in Christ having gifts that differ, of course. So let's use them differently and let's be the, let's be the body of Christ. And if you've got a hang up, well then let's get some PT, you know, let's get some soul training and let's, but let's do it together because it's not just. Um, the community that we need, um, which is important, and, and, and we'll talk about this, it's, it's not just that we need a community to support us, our inward growth. No, it's the community that supports our growth so that we can support the community, so that we can be part of this body, so that we can care for other people, so that we can move outwards. Does that make sense? That it's not just about, oh, I need a support group for me to grow inward. No, I need people so that I can grow into what God's calling me to do and do that in the context of, of people. So uh, it's, it's not private spirituality. And, and I want to use this word so often, but I, I want to use Christiformity so often, but I just, we've got to, the, the shape of Christ. We want to grow up into the shape of Christ, the form of Christ, Christiformity. I'm going to say that, um, and I don't want to have to repeat myself every time, but it's living a life like Jesus did. That's what we're doing. Why didn't Jesus just zap you? Hey, I got saved. I'm next up. And you grab a bunch of balloons and you're off to, off to heaven. It's shaping us to become like Christ in the context of community so that we will live out as representatives of who God is, uh, the, the true story of God to a watching world. That's what we're up to. Welcome to the party. This is who we are as a people. And so I just want to encourage you, if, if your thought has been, okay, I just need to get better, better, better. Okay, I just need to get more... Uh, more, more right with, with these different areas of my life. And man, what a failure I am and how weak. I must have no willpower. I must not be able to pull this stuff off. Oh, man, I'm just, uh, stop, stop. What you haven't set yourself up for are the conditions in which that kind of growth can happen. It's, it's the principle of indirection. You're not just trying, 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 trying. You're setting the circumstances so that you will be successful. And look around. We've got a people. 
Look around. We've got uh, community groups that are um, itching to pour their lives into one another so that we're not doing this alone. And not doing it just to prop you up so you can feel better about yourself. It's so that we can serve together as a community. We've tasked the connection groups with with thinking through who are you going to help walk along this journey to become like Christ? Well, okay, well, let's let's look around. Um, Many of us need that help. So you could just say, help me. That's good. But by becoming like Christ, that means you're also part of helping other people. And it means that you are serving other people. And it means that you are living out the lifestyle that Christ is asking us to do. So, so follow along with the group. You can grab this book. Um, let's, let's figure out, is this really true? God just wants me to try harder. Uh, next week, Justin's going to take a look at this whole idea of God blesses me when I'm good and punishes me when I'm bad. And I just got to figure out how to, how to manage Manage all that. God's actually just basically angry with me, and now I'm trying to trying to figure it all out. So let's let's pursue this together. But let's just let's just say, God, you're so good, right? We just we've sung that. God, you're so good. Would you uh, would you show us who you are? Reveal to us who you are, and do it in in, in the context of community where we can all do that together. Um, these questions they're they're pretty small. Don't try to write them down. Um, but there are in our bulletin online. If you go to our website, isquad.cc, you can see a bulletin page. And then all, this, all these notes will be there for you. Um, but I just want you to think about together. Maybe that's over lunch today. Or maybe it's, um, maybe it's over at a small group or something. Talk about this idea of changing and this experience of failure. And, and think about these soul training exercises. The, the first one we're going to encourage you to do uh, it's just sleep, for goodness sakes. Give it up already. Stop trying to make the world, you know, in, into, your, into your mold and, and stop just running, 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 running and take a break. That's what nighttime is for. And I'm not going to give you the full TED Talk on why sleep is super important, but it's out there, right? Um, but it's a foundational building block. I know even just talking with Justin, um, you were having sleep issues and, uh, and we were just talking the other, the other week is you just got those things started to resolve. Like the world's a bright <laughs> and better place. I mean, it's just, it's just so foundational. So Christian sounds pretty basic. Get some rest. Uh, be available to God by, by, by having your soul um, in a good posture for that. Let me pray for you. Um, it's a really minor task. And since you stayed, most of you stayed awake, um, I think that the, tonight's going to be really good. Most of you didn't get your nap in. That's great. Father God, we want to renew our minds. And not just in some sort of um, happy, clappy, positivity, I can do this, I'm amazing. God, we just want to focus on how good you are. And God, we would love to, to say that 2020 was a, was a time of our great faithfulness to you. And, and yet, some of us know it's really going to be about your faithfulness to us. And so we just accept and receive from you. Um, would you shape us like your son? Father God, would you conform us to the likeness of Jesus? We want to be like Jesus. We want to be flexible, using the physical therapy idea. We want to be mobile. We want to be serving. And so would you equip a church um, to do that work of service so that we could see both Issaquah and the regions around light up with praise about how good and glorious you are.